The Geeland buses question is from the December 2007 exam. And it's a good example of how you need to make some general comments about what the numbers actually mean in the exam. Now, this one was the compulsory question, question one on, as I say, the December 2007 exam. So the first thing that we have to do is to comment on the financial performance of these two organisations. Now, you will notice that you have got quite a lot of information there. So, for example, you have got this year, 2010 actual, and last year, 2009 actual. You have also got 2010 actual, you got 2010 budget, and you've got that for both organisations. Now, I know this sounds obvious sitting here watching this video, but it's an exam question. So one of the things you need to think about is what general things can we expect to find? One of the areas that I have found marking student scripts is that students are very keen to start calculating things in detail. This number has done this and this, num this number has gone up by that percent and that number has gone down by that percent. But they're very poor at interpreting them. So what I would suggest is that whenever you get a question where there is like here quite a lot of numbers, you at least think about just have a look overall. Think about some general trends that might give you some clues about what we should be discussing. So let's have a look here. Just keep we're just in this video. We're going to keep it very, very, very simple. I'm not even going to do any calculations. We're just going to highlight things. So first of all, then, we have got for GBC, Geeland Buses, you can see revenue last year was 5.67 million. It was expected that it would go up slightly. Unfortunately, it has gone down fairly significantly. So it's gone down quite a lot. Now, is that going to be a good thing or is that going to be a bad thing? It's a bus company. What would the vast majority of its costs be? Fixed or variable? Well, can I suggest to you that a lot of their costs would be fixed? So if you have less revenue, it's a bus company that presumably means fewer passengers. Fewer passengers, a lot of your costs stay the same. So what's going to happen to your profits? Your profits will almost certainly go down. And if you have a look down at the bottom line, we were expecting profits to go down very slightly from 1.5 million to 1.4 million. OK, maybe that's because of the economy or whatever rising fuel prices. So we expected things to be slightly worse, but they are a lot worse. Now, that fall is not just due to the revenue going down. If you have a look last year's revenue and this year's revenue, there is about 400,000 difference. But profit has gone down by 700,000 from 1.5 to 800,000. So we weren't very good with the revenue. It fell but also our costs presumably were too high. Why would revenue fall? Was there something we were doing wrong? Why would costs be going up? Were we not very good at controlling them? Now, again, I, I haven't calculated anything yet. I've just looked at some numbers and even already, I can tell some things about this company. They're obviously not doing that brilliantly, revenue down, and they're not very good at cost control, costs up. Now let's compare them with the terrific transport company. Same idea. We were expecting or they were expecting revenue to go up by a million pounds to go from 4.3 to 5.3 million. But it actually went up by more than that. So whatever they were doing, they were doing right. Similarly, for the profit, we were expecting it to go up by a million. That to me looks like pretty much the one million extra revenue feeding through into approximately one million extra 
in the way of profit. So they were hoping costs would stay relatively constant. So extra revenue would be extra profit. But in fact, they did slightly better than that. So they actually did, okay, profits have gone up even more than that. So if you look at what we've got, we have got one organization, GBC, getting worse, not only getting worse, budget was down and they didn't even meet that. And we've got one company getting better, budget was higher and they beat that fairly easily. Now, this is a typical kind of exam question. One company's worse and getting even farther behind. So last year, if we look at just the profit figure, um, you can see that GBC was better basically because its revenue was higher, whereas now GBC is worse. So they've fallen behind their budget and they've fallen behind with their actuals. So they were anticipating budgeted profit down and actual profits even lower than that. So just look at those basic numbers. And as I, as I, as I have already said, I haven't calculated anything yet, but even now I can see some stuff that's wrong. This is a very good step to do in the exam. Lots of students will immediately start calculating things. Now, what would be useful to calculate? You could just look at percentage changes, but you might want to look at things like net profit margins, because net profit margins, obviously, profits compared to revenue. That might be reasonable. You might want to look at gross profit margins. You've got total variable costs. So you can obviously work out the gross profit, revenue minus total variable costs, and compare that to the revenue and see what's happening there. Something else that is interesting, I notice, I notice that TTC, remember who were doing well, do not operate anything in the West. There is no revenue, there is no cost. But GBC do. I wonder why that is. If I just get rid of that, and I'll just highlight that, I'll highlight it in blue. Since you've got some information, is there anything else you notice? Well, GBC are running west at a loss. 230,000 revenue, 268,000 costs. TTC aren't bothering with that. I wonder whether that means that west is not very good and TTC don't want to do it. Maybe GBC have to, or maybe it's just that GBC aren't very good. At the, at the moment, I don't know. Now, in the actual question, I've only taken the numbers here. In the actual question, you got told some information about West. But again, what lots of students do is they get involved in the details too early. They should take a step back. And there's actually quite a lot of information there. And you can use all of this to try and give you some guidance as to what the question might be going to ask you. So, for example, again, no loan interest for GBC, 100,000 for TTC. I wonder why TTC has loans, why they're necessary and GBC doesn't. You can also see repairs and maintenance, repairs and maintenance. Repairs and maintenance for GBC is high and increasing. TTC is low and constant. Why might that be? Well, maybe the equipment, in this case, the buses that TTC use may be newer. That would explain the lower depreciation. It would also explain the loan interest if they had to borrow the money to buy the buses. So all these things fit together and you get a much better idea of them if you simply look at the figures before you start calculating anything. So one of the things that we do in more detail on the course is we go through questions like this in more detail and then we will analyze them and say, what does those numbers actually tell us in detail?